Kevin. Despite being seriously injured, Kevin used a very specific close combat tactic called the forward drive to fend off an attacker in a parking garage. Now, more than ever, you need to be prepared to fight back, and you can either be a sitting target or your attacker's worst nightmare. My name is Damian Ross, creator of the Self-Defense Training System, and over the last 30 years, I've compiled the most practical close combat methods based on the tactics perfected by elite commandos in World War II. This system is based on reaction and instinct and can be learned and implemented in less than 60 minutes. Unlike most martial arts that can take years to master and may be vastly ineffective the minute you leave the dojo, my system leverages your fight or flight instinct, which means it's easy to learn and even harder to forget. If you can swing a bat or kick a ball, you can do this. And if you want to really be able to protect yourself and your loved ones when you're out in this crazy world or when that crazy world kicks in your front door, just click the button to check out my 60 minute self-defense program now. You can get instant access to the online program for a ridiculously low, low price. And if you order today, I'll also give you three incredible bonuses absolutely free. So go ahead and click on the button and I'll see you on the other side. I don't need a black belt. Self-defense is not a sport or an activity. It is self-preservation. Self-preservation depends on your ability to perform simple tasks under extraordinary conditions. To do that, you need the plan plus decide plus act equals survival, or PDAS formula. The 60-minute self-defense for the people program gives you that plan, tells you when to decide, and then shows you how to act. In the end, you survive. It's that simple. In just 60 minutes, you will have a clear understanding of what you need to survive and escape from even the most determined, violent attacker. The 60-minute Self-Defense for the People program will give you the tools you need. Simply watch the video and implement the drills and mindsetting techniques on your worksheets. You only need to go through the drills a handful of times. These drills, combined with your natural will to survive, will give you that power in your greatest time of need. At the Self-Defense Company, self-defense is not a lifetime endeavor. It is a necessary life skill. We hope that you are never placed in a life or death situation. But if you are, you will have the knowledge and the skill to survive and get home safe. Thank you for taking the time to consider the Self-Defense Company's 60-minute self-defense for the people. Together, we will make our communities safe. back to in your defense with daniel cothran today i got another really uh, awesome guest for you her name is corlette buyer did i say that right yeah colette buyer nice to meet you daniel nice to meet you ma'am uh before we started recording this episode we were talking about your um your little business there the uh the focus program what is that yeah. So I have a program called One Focus. Uh, so real quick, my background, uh, lifelong martial artist, uh, former law enforcement officer, tactile strength and conditioning coach. And, uh, you know, all those experiences have taught me over the years that uh, you have to have one focus at a time and really chip away at that every single day to form a habit. So I work with clients for 70 days straight. We identify something that they're really struggling with to conquer, whether it's uh you know, getting ready for their next PFT or range qualification. And we reverse engineer a plan that's going to move the needle a little bit every single day. And uh, it's had really fantastic results. It's, it's had fantastic results for me myself. So I'm a big fan of the program. That's great. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about um, how somebody would uh, reach you and, st and, and get signed up for your, your program? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're launching a beta accelerator on on Monday, so probably not in time for this, but I'm going to actually continuously run the course from this point forward because this way, you know, the best the best time to make a change is uh, is right now. So you could sign up at any time. So you can just go to my website, ColetteBuyer.com, and that'll get you, get you where you need to be. Okay, awesome. And I'll leave a link in the description for that. Uh, that right there was just for people who already know, as soon as they met you, I want to take her class. Um, but why would anybody want to take your class for those who are still on the fence? Yeah. So like I said, you know, my background has always been in doing just, just hard shit. Right. So, uh, I, I'm honest to God, I, I, I think about it now and I look back at, you know, all the things I've done in life, uh, including like riding a bicycle across the country, being a pack a day smoker and not training. And I've just always had a mindset of, 
I don't know, one step forward, um, you know, one pedal stroke forward. And it's just that that tenacity, that persistence to never give up um, that a lot of people, I guess, are not born with, but it can absolutely be trained. Uh, and that's really what I'm on a mission to do now that I'm no longer in uniform. I think a lot of times, you know, the biggest thing that I saw going to calls for service on the street was that people got themselves into trouble because they weren't focused. And they definitely, you know, we live in a pampered society, right? You have instant gratification and a life of total ease these days. And I think honestly, making making hard choices and choosing to do hard things in your life just makes you a better human. And it makes you more focused and aware and, and ultimately makes you more safe and secure, which gets into your domain. Absolutely. Um, what what made you want to get into this originally? Like you said, you, you were in law enforcement and stuff. What made you choose that career path? Yeah, I mean, so law enforcement is a giant political mess right now. And I was not about to be, uh, you know, hung out to drive by some politician. So I got out right at, right at the five year mark, just shy of the five year mark and realized that, you know, I needed to continue to serve. I, I needed a new mission. And I needed some sort of purpose because that that lack of meaning and purpose in your life um, is something for somebody that's a very driven individual, male or female, it doesn't matter. That energy, if it doesn't have someplace productive and positive to go, it will go in a really negative place like drinking, smoking, smoking weed, doing all the things, eating, eating crap that you shouldn't be eating and not, you know, falling off the wagon. The big thing that I noticed on the street was that, again, people just just were not focused and they were putting themselves in unnecessarily dangerous situations. And I knew that there had to be a way to really help them kind of get their head screwed on straight. I mean, aside from doing this with more of the mindset coaching, I am a, a full-time firearms instructor and per private security services, law enforcement trainer. So I, I get to scratch that itch and do that work. But like we were talking about before we started recording, the reality is, is that a lot of people just really aren't ready for that training and the level of commitment that it takes that, you know, you have to really commit yourself to focusing on those high liability skills to to not only learning them and mastering them, but keeping your skills up and keeping them fresh. Because if you don't practice, you absolutely will perish. I would have to agree with that. The, the thing that I tell a lot of people, okay, one of the first things that I hear from everybody. Why do I need self-defense? Because I, ha I have a gun. Um, yeah, that helps, but that's just one tool in the toolbox, right? And you mentioned the mindset a lot. Um, you know, there's this back in the day, I don't, I'm sure they still use it. Um, they used to talk about the alpha and beta mindset, or uh, there's a lot of jocks or tough guys want to be in high school that oh, I'm an alpha, you know? Um we kind of use that, but we go with a, the predator versus prey mindset. And before you have a gun, before you have anything, you have these right here. These are just weapons too. This right here is where it's all at from, from you don't have to have anything. If you have it all up here first, everything after that is just a force multiplier. And I think, you know, that's where you come in with your training They you, you can help people learn how to use those tools. Um, having a gun is great. Having a knife is great. Having spray, taser, baton, whatever you want, a frying pan, uh, wasp spray. This metal oh, pen right here, like this perfect. little Sharpie pen. Yeah, my favorite pen, right? Yeah, I could stab yeah. you with this in the neck or the eyeball or whatever. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but your yeah. your mind your mind your mind is the weapon, right? I try to tell people that that you know you are your own best self defense, right? And Tony Blauer talks about that a lot. But th the reality is is that we live in a political climate where one day we could wake up and literally everything, including your knives in your kitchen, could be illegal. Right. So with that, with that in mind, because it's happened in other places like the UK, um, with that, with that in mind, you know, what is the one thing that you can take with you everywhere you go for better or for worse? And it is your mind. It's absolutely your mind and and what your mind is, is trained on. Right. I and mean, we could get into talking about, you know, visualization and, and winning the war in your mind before you ever, you know, step into the ring or step onto a battlefield or, or step onto the street. You know, driving to calls for service, I would constantly be playing the what if game in my head. You know, not only the what if game of, you know, some car runs a red light, you know, and 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 
crashes into me while I'm running code someplace. But, you know, also, you know, what are all the possible scenarios that could happen when I show up on scene? And, and, and my big things are this, right? Tattooed on every wall of every dojo, defensive tactics room or, or home gym, if you're, if you're in this mindset and, and this lifestyle, should be distance plus cover equals time. And the biggest thing that I try to tell people is, is that if you can, if you can be situationally aware, have an open mind, have an open focus, because this is open awareness and open focus is legitimately a thing. I'm reading a book right now. I don't have it up here. I would show it to you. It's literally called Focus, the Hidden Driver of Excellence. And they talk a lot about, about how your mind, how your mind scans, right? And, and how we perceive things and intuition and how intuition is really a, a a, a byproduct of your experiences in life and all your all the things you've seen and gone through. But the point being is, is that if, if I could see something at 50 feet, 100 feet and change my course and get to cover or get to safety or duck in a store or get in my car or go back in the house and I can avoid the situation in the first place, I'm not going to create that groove in my brain, that trauma groove in my brain that causes people so many issues and leads to a lot of drug and alcohol abuse, you know, there's some pretty good statistics to show with, I'm really into the, the nerdy neurology and the biology of this stuff. But, you know, if you're ever a victim of a crime, you're, you're 26 times more likely to develop one or more alcohol or drug problems as a result of that. So with that being said, you know, being focused and being situationally aware is, is your best defense. Absolutely. Hands down. Number one. Yeah, um, <laughs> you nailed a lot of topics there and a lot of points and very great points, actually. Um, you said that at the beginning that you, um, for anybody who's watching, I'm about to bring up a topic that might be touchy to martial artists um, and versus self-defense and, and reality-based. That's where we, we are is the reality-based versus the art form. You, you mentioned you were in martial arts. What would you um, say about um, if I was taking self-defense, name it, Taekwondo, karate, jujitsu, all of that stuff versus um, learning some real world tactics um, for self-defense? What, what What's your thoughts on that? All right. So, I mean, I've had a background in, in uh, well, Korean Tung Sudo was the first thing that I ever was put into as a kid. Uh, and I was good at it, but we went to an open, we went to an open tournament and I got kicked in the head by a girl that was in Taekwondo. And my mom was like, absolutely not. You're going to learn to fight. Uh, and she searched high and low until she found a sensei that was going to teach me. Right. And, and, you know, he was of the mindset of mixed martial arts prior to even the UFC coming out. I started training with him in 1991. And, uh, you know, he was a Japanese goji Ru, you know, fifth Don or whatever. And, and also, but he had. Aikido black sashes in the, in the, in the dojo. And he was an American stand-up kickboxer. You know, every art form has its benefit, but you know, if we're just talking like pure straight up, you know, you want to protect your life. I'm sorry, but your traditional karate arts, as far as I'm concerned and martial arts are really not where it's at. Um, everyone has their place, but the things that I really particularly care for more uh, now that I'm older and I understand things a little bit more and I've had more exposure to things are, are things like the spear system and Krav, uh, but spear more so than Krav, you know, where, where you're actually training those innate flinch responses and, and really, you know, putting together the whole package, um, you know, punching and kicking and katas and weapons and all that kind of stuff is fantastic. And I think that plays a place in your, in your, in your toolbox when it comes to maybe learning how to center yourself and meditate and stuff like that. But as far as actual on the street, the best thing I've seen people use to, to try to kick shit out of cops was, was, B, was BJJ. I mean, you know, somebody with just a little bit of experience rolling on the street could cause you a lot of problems when you're wearing an outer carrier and a duty belt. Right. Uh, one of my experiences was I was, um, it was like 20 years old or whatever and dog, the bounty hunter started coming out. Right. And, uh, I, I never got into the way he looked, but the way he acted, I was like, man, I want to be like that guy. <laughs> so I got 21 years old and got me a handgun permit, went and took a bell bonds class and, uh, got into fugitive recovery work. And, uh, I was a black belt at this time through traditional Wadaru karate, 
there's a little bit of boxing in it and stuff, but um, I learned real quick that that type of stuff, it helped me um, defend myself against somebody who was also doing those things, but somebody who's just enraged and on drugs or, or something like that, that wanted ill intent. That horse stance, low block stuff didn't help me much. <laughs> well, look, I mean, they call a gun a great equalizer, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm 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 five foot seven and 135 pounds. Like, I'm not a big girl, right? So I, especially, you know, being in uniform, I had to be tactically proficient and very technical and good with my with my joint locks and my manipulation and you know knowing and understanding how to use the baton and pressure points and like you said, it's force multiplication. But it's not a fair fight. I mean, if you're going to come into a, a fight with personal weapons and that person has just personal weapons, then cool, like go go punch each other in the face and see how it goes. But, you know, we're not living in that world right now. You know, people are being carjacked left and right. And, and I mean, look, I, I'm a taser instructor for law enforcement and civilian. And the, the tools are cool. I mean, tasers are great, you know, but they have limitations. Everything has a limitation, right? I mean... You carry a handgun, you could be disarmed. You carry a taser, you know, you might miss. You might not get good neuromuscular incapacitation. Maybe you're too far. Maybe you're too close. The clothing issues, right? The probe spread, all the things that really need to be trained. I mean, look, cops get tased on the street. Cops get tased by other cops. I mean, these are the things that don't get talked about, right? Like I've been tased, yeah, on the street by my coworker. It happens, right? So everything's got a limitation and that's why I'm really big on people having like a very well-rounded toolbox. Um, I'm not a fan of pepper spray. I'll be straight up honest with you, but it's a tool. Yeah. So um, one of the things I've also done is I've worked at our prison and that's pretty much all we had was pepper spray. Yeah. You had sauce and that's it. Yeah. And the main reason being is because exactly what you've said um, we can't take firearms in there because nope. they can be taken away and used against you. Can't take uh, any other thing that can be taken away other than the spray, really. Um, we did have pepper ball guns and stuff like that. But um, if you were just a guard working solo, pepper spray, if you had it. Other than that, it was yeah. just your hands. Yeah, I mean, and pepper ball guns are now readily available through Sabre uh, Home Defense, actually. They're making a civilian pepper ball gun. I don't know if you've seen it. I'm an instructor for them. And uh, it's something cool. I mean, like I always say, I want a flamethrower for Christmas. I did not get my flamethrower for Christmas that I asked for, unfortunately. <laughs> but I guess I could use an acetylene torch. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things where, you know, we live in a wild world right now. And But but the biggest things that we're seeing right now are what are carjackings more than anything else. Right. It's not, and it's not just kids that are looking to take a joy ride. It's somebody sticking a gun in your face and saying, give me your car. Uh, and if you have the mindset, uh, and you're, and you're doing the things that are right in terms of just trying to avoid that carjacking in the first place, um, maybe you can avoid it and never even need to use a weapon like the car or a gun or something along those lines. Right. And that kind of goes back into uh, the mindset stuff. Ultimately, that is your number one line of defense is your mindset. Talking about mindset, one of the things that we use for um, the self-defense company, uh, as far as terms go or phrases, is called making yourself a hard target. And that's when you're talking about the carjackings. You never can really predict when you may or may not become a victim but you can increase your ability to, and let me say, decrease your ability of being one if you act a certain way or, um, well, I'll just say it. Basically, just appear more confident and alert. Um, be aware of where you're parking your vehicle. You don't want to be parking in a dark alley. You know, if you're at, let's say, Walmart, because that's everywhere, you know, is the lighting in the parking lot good? You know, simple things like that will help you. Uh, but you mentioned uh, pepper ball guns for civilians. I've never seen that, but I'm sure they have them because I know they have tasers for civilians. Yep. And um, I don't personally have one. Uh, the difference for people listening between a stun gun and a taser is one is it, basically a distance, right? Uh, you can get somebody from seven feet, whatever. Um, I don't know how far it goes, but, and the other one, you got to get real close and dirty with it. Um, 
but I noticed that the one for law enforcement is like five seconds long, but the one for civilians is 30 seconds. Yeah, it's the uh, so typically law enforcement's carrying either the X26, the X2, or the Taser 7 now at this point. And those all have cartridges typically that are, you know, 15, 25. They even have like a 35 footer, but that's more for like game wardens up in Alaska trying to, you know, take out a moose or something. That's, yeah, I mean, they do, they use them up there for that. So that's kind of cool. I've never seen a moose be, be tased before. But yeah, the, the civilian version, the pulse. Yeah, I know. I'll look it up online. The 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 civilian version of the Pulse uh, is a is a compact tool. They're actually coming out with another version of something. The redesigned Bolt uh, dropping on Monday, if I uh, believe so. But the Pulse basically is the same form factor as say uh, Glock forty three or so. It's pretty lightweight. It easily fits in a sticky holster. I wear it sometimes in like just a pair of five eleven leggings or jeans. You don't need you don't need belt loops, which is nice for a lot of ladies who don't have belt loops because the gods of design are against the women in this world unless you're wearing vertex pants or 511 and there's no pockets or belt loops but the the, the the taser pulse is about 15 it's a 15 foot distance and it is it's a 30 second ride so it's really designed to be a throwdown device where you know you get you get that good neuromuscular incapacitation it's a one it's a one shot one laser so it's really designed to be shot midsection like belly button area um, and then that second, that second probe comes out at just the right angle because science is, you know, their, their physics is an amazing thing at Taser. They're pretty awesome with their R and D. Uh, and that's a 30 second ride if you get good neuromuscular incapacitation. So uh, it's a tool, right? But if you miss, then what, then you've got a pissed off person charging at you, probably trying to beat the hell out of you. Uh, at that point, you do have a stun gun because you can still make contact with the with the with the device and touch it to them. But that's just pain compliance at that point. Right. Um, so I, I have noticed this, you know, Pulse has been out a little bit now, but it, it's designed, just like you said, to uh, to use it, drop it. And they write 30 seconds while you run for help. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but just like you said, if you miss, what do you do? Um, you revert back to your training or if no train or no training. You don't have to have it. You're right. Yeah. You I, don't I not, have to have any training nope. to run. <laughs> no, you don't. Well, and another thing too is though, is I, you know, I, I, I ask people when they come to me for training, you know, we kind of like do a little bit of a, I, I like to get inside their head before we work together. And I'm like, so, and it's interesting because I would think it would be men that would be, this would be the exclusive domain of men, but it's not, it's women too. I'm like, so, you know, if something happens, like, what are you going to do? And everyone resoundingly tells me like, well, I'm going to spring into action and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to lift, like, I'm going to like lift the car off my kid. You know, that kind you know, you hear the stories about like the mom who lifted the car off a pin child or something like that, which it happens, I'm sure. But uh, adrenaline's an amazing thing. However, the majority of people are going to, um, going straight into condition black if you talk about, you know, the different Cooper color codes, they're going to completely freeze up. Um, they're they're going to go from white to black, which is like the worst thing ever, right? You've gone from complete oblivion and just, you know, head in the clouds, daydreaming, facing the phone or whatever you're doing to literally being completely frozen in fear uh, and like pee in your pants. So I guarantee you like to, to go ahead and, and actually draw the taser and get good NMI and get a good hit and not be too close or too far. It's something you have to practice. And most folks, honestly, are just not practicing. I find that it's really good to have a taser if you're in that kind of line of work, but not so much if you are just wanting it for defense. And, and I'm not knocking taser. It's something's better than nothing, right? Something is obviously better than nothing. But we always think about what happens in this scenario. Well, you're thinking about the scenario at that point in time. When it actually happens, you were distracted by something. A criminal is not going to let you know, hey, I'm about to attack you. Yeah. What are you going to say? Hey, hold on. Time out. Let me draw my taser. Like, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I, I mean, I think the taser is a good backup to a firearm. I and I know this, you know, most people, I mean, maybe they do or don't know. I don't know, you know, the makeup of your audience, but most cops carry a backup gun. You know, they carry a a Smith and Wesson bodyguard shrouded hammer six shot, you know, 38 special or something like that. Just so that way they have something as a backup gun to get a contact shot off. If God forbid they're disarmed or they're on the ground fighting for their life, rolling around, 
you know, you're trained to roll onto your gun and pin it down to the ground, but then you need something else, right? A karamba, a fixed blade, something in your belt, something in your vest that you can grab and, and, and make contact with. So yeah, the taser is great. I mean, I'm not a fan of stun guns, right? Because the point of a stun gun is they have to be right up close on somebody. I don't want you right up close on me. I want you way outside my bubble. Uh, but the reality is most things are an ambush um, because people are completely oblivious to it. So taser is great. That was a backup weapon, you know, or I guess in a place where you can't have a firearm, but you know, I'm, I'm biased, right? I, I, I want my gun with me if I'm going to be someplace where I can, where I can have it. Right. So when you're talking about firearms, talking about tasers, pepper spray and all that stuff, let's get back to focus. Uh, your company that you're working, doing this training, can you, uh, go a little bit more in depth on that? Yeah. I mean, so in terms of really, what would you, what do you want to know? As if I was just a nobody just stumbled upon your website, just sure. now heard about you and I'm looking, I, I I'm looking to get training. Yeah. So, okay. So I've told you before, I'm an endurance athlete. I was telling Daniel before we got on here that, you know, I rode a bicycle across the country in college and I was a pack a day smoker at, without training. And it's just my personality, right? I just, I kind of have that personality just to sort of to beat on myself, I guess, to get things done. When people come to me, uh, they're typically, <laughs> they're typically hurt. Uh, or they're typically lost in life. They've been injured at work or they've been injured as an athlete and they've really kind of lost their way. So my big thing is really helping you to regain some sense of like purpose and meaning in life. I guess if we really want to get down to it, our society has become wicked soft, incredibly soft, especially in the last, you know, 10 years or so with smartphones and instant gratification and, you know, same day Amazon delivery and, and all these things that have made us weak as a society. And, and that is not an indictment of any particular, you know, gender or race or anything like that. It's, it's everyone. So I like to teach people to inject artificial hardship into their life uh, as much as possible. And I have people do that by choosing a hard thing that they really struggle with in life. So, and, and a hard thing physically. I'm a big fan of Andy Frisella. I'm a big fan of 75 hard. I'm in the midst of 75 hard right now, which is a mental toughness challenge. We're gonna do the whole live hard program this year. Check it out. It's a really awesome program. But where I come in is really to help people identify that one thing that they're just struggling like hell with, right? So I told Daniel earlier for me, here's a good example. My hard thing was always firearms proficiency, being consistent with it. I would bounce around. I would get in my head. I'd be in the low 80s and qualify. I'd be in the, in the low 90s and qualify. And I'd be somewhere in between. And it used to drive me crazy. Our range master used to say, buyer, don't get in your effing head this time, you know, and he'd get angry with me because he he knew like, I know this girl's capable of shooting. She has the skill to do it, but she's all over the place because she misses a shot. She gets in her head and she throws her qual. So my thing is you come to me and we really figure out what is your hard thing. And I define hard thing as this, something that does not naturally come easy to you, something that really requires some sustained attention and some really good, smart practice for you to get better at it. You're not allowed to quit. Okay. You can't, none of this like start and stop stuff. Like, oh, uh, this is not what I wanted to do. I'm just going to throw in the towel. No, none of that. It's 70 days. We don't quit on ourselves. You pick a hard thing, you don't quit, and then you execute every single day, small steps. I don't have the book here. I base all of my training off of the ancient Japanese philosophy of Kaizen, which is continuous improvement methodology. Kaizen says this basically in one sentence this is Kaizen. If you try to do too much too soon, you literally trip the amygdala in your brain, which is your fight or flight response. You go straight into fear, you go straight into procrastination, and you go straight into inaction. So what I do is I, may, I help you figure out three small steps that you can take every single day that will allow you to become just a little bit better, 1% better every single day at what it is that you're struggling with. So for me, when I really wanted to get better at shooting, I did three different things. Number one, I did five rounds of five second of box breathing, combat breathing, seal breathing, whatever you want to call it. And while I was doing that breathing, I was visualizing my qualification. Number two, I did a lot of hand strengthening, both especially my support hand, but just to kind of equal things out, that was really, really important to me, you know, picking up heavy things and putting them down. 
And then the last thing was really getting those that establishing that perfect grip in the holster and getting those, getting that perfect presentation and that nice smooth trigger press. And I did that every single day for 70 days and retested myself. And I've been in the mid to high nineties ever since then without fail. So it's just, it's things like that, that you have to break it down into small steps and most people get excited, right? It's New Year's, it's New Year's resolutions. And actually January 17th is literally National Quitters Day. That is when all these tracking apps that track fitness like Strava have come to find out that people give up on their New Year's resolution. Like the app didn't crash, you just all quit. So we're coming up on National Quitters Day. It's this Monday, January 17th. Uh, and that's actually when I'm uh, launching my, my next cohort of students uh, and athletes. And we're going to work at it for 70 days and that's it. Like no quitting. You got to check in with me every single day. And if you fail, if you don't do what you're supposed to do one day, you got to start over at day one. That's it. Like you have to be consistent with one thing at a time. And then when you're done that one thing, you can start something new, but you can't quit. That sounds great. And I didn't know that about the uh, January 17th. Um, I figured it would be like January 2nd. <laughs> yeah, you, we'll give people a little more leeway than that. But oh, yeah, like every single week, it's it's like 8% of people that start out with New Year's resolutions ever even complete them at the end of the year. Right? But at the, most people, though, like everybody is just really struggling right now. They just feel like they don't have meaning in their life, espe especially with what's going on in the world, everybody working from home and so much disruption in the world. Like you have to create your own structure. You have to create your own your own tough circumstances. Otherwise, you're just going to live a life of ease. And a life of ease is something that does not lead to people feeling accomplished. Like, I'm sure you can speak to this. Like, you know, you're out, you're out working a job and, you know, you're staked out on somebody that you're trying to find. And it's that hunt drive that you're looking for this person. And it's 10 degrees outside and you're freezing to death. And the last place you want to be is sitting in a car in the middle of the night looking for somebody. But the reality is like, doing those hard things are rewarding. And it, you go home at night at, at the end of the day and take your shower and kick back and have a beer or whatever. And, and you feel like you've actually done something in your life. 99% of people don't have that. And I guarantee you, I, I'm convinced that that's the reason why people are so unhappy. Yeah, I would, I would hundred percent agree with that. Um, I'm actually uh, tuned into a guy named David Goggins. Have you heard of him? I have. I'm actually going to start training for his four by four by 48. Are you familiar with that? Oh yeah. And if you could do that, please yeah. document that and let me I see am. it. I'm, do I'm documenting it. I'm actually going to, I'm actually hiring a running coach because coaches need coaches and I, I'm going to hire somebody to program for me so I can, I can make that happen. Absolutely. He is for those that don't know who he is. Um, definitely look him up on YouTube. He's very motivational, um, but he's mainly in the, in the physical stuff like health fitness stuff like that uh, but everything that he says can go to everything i believe uh, but the 40 percent rule is something that's really helping me uh stick to a routine a little bit better than i normally am uh and you mentioned something earlier that made me think of david was uh um i can't remember how you termed it but i think you said uh self-induced suffering yeah, you have to, you I mean, really like you, you have to make things hard on yourself. That's it. Like self, yeah, self-imposed hardship. It, it's true. Like, I don't know. I, I, you know, hanging up the uniform and, and not putting on a, not going out there and, you know, papering accidents in a snowstorm has, you know, makes a man makes you soft when you don't have to do those things anymore. Like, I don't want to go outside and, and go out and do, I hate the cold. Like I will move to Florida tomorrow and never look back. And I would not cry if I never saw another snowflake in my life. But the reality is, is I live in a cold climate right now. And it was, uh, you know, 10 degrees outside and snowing this week. And, uh, I went outside and did my weight vest walk and I recorded myself on Instagram, not because I want to show the world what I'm doing and that I have some sort of ego to stroke, but because it's, it's accountability is what it is. It's, it's showing up. And I, and I do, I have my clients check in with me every day. Like you need to show me, I want to see that screen on your Peloton. I have a client right now. She's, she's 290 pounds. She's never been this big in her life. And, uh, you know, we know each other from high school. We were athletes together. 
we played three sports every single year together. And she's like, I've never been this big and I'm unhappy and, and I need to fix it. And I said, well, I literally want you to just get on the Peloton bike every single day and do 10 minutes and you need to, and you need to send me a picture of it. And she's doing some other stuff too with her diet and cleaning up her lifestyle. But, you know, she messaged me this week and she goes, I'm, I'm, I'm really hitting a wall. I'm having a hard day today. And I said, well, I just want you to get on the bike for one minute then. I, I don't care. 10 minutes, forget it. Just one. And you know what? She ultimately got on the bike for one minute, which is a Kaizen thing. That's totally textbook Kaizen is one minute. And, uh, and she stayed on the bike for 10, right? Because she got on for one and it was like, well, I'm on here already. I'll just keep on going. So, Right. That That's exactly what uh, the Gov uh, Goggins thing reminds me of, um, yeah. or that reminds me of Goggins. Um, yeah. So you're just, you seem very passionate about helping others uh, and in your professional um, line of work and it's great to have you on as a guest because it matches exactly what we at the self-defense company are doing as well. Uh, just a little bit of variant, um, but I'm going to leave a link in the description below it before we jump off here. Is there anything that you would like to add? No, thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, I always say go out there, do hard things and win. And, uh, I do truly believe it. And, people need to go out there and, and just do hard things. So go give me a follow on Instagram and uh, I'd love to see you doing hard things and, you know, and kicking ass in life and and making yourself a better human. Sounds great. Meyer. It's nice having you on. You have a great day. God bless and stay safe out there. Thank you. All right, folks, that was I think I'm adding you back on. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's an amateur move. All right. It's all good. Have a good day. God bless. Take care. All right, folks, that was buyer. Check her out. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. If you're interested in doing any kind of training with her, click that link. If you're interested in the ads that uh, at the beginning of the show, click the link. I'll also leave in the description below. This is Daniel Cawthon signing off in your defense. Have a good day. God bless. Stay safe out there. This is Kevin. Despite being seriously injured, Kevin used a very specific close combat tactic called the forward drive to fend off an attacker in a parking garage. Now, more than ever, you need to be prepared to fight back, and you can either be a sitting target or your attacker's worst nightmare. My name is Damian Ross, creator of the Self-Defense Training System, and over the last 30 years, I've compiled the most practical close combat methods based on the tactics perfected by elite commandos in World War II. This system is based on reaction and instinct and can be learned and implemented in less than 60 minutes. Unlike most martial arts that can take years to master and may be vastly ineffective the minute you leave the dojo, my system leverages your fight or flight instinct, which means it's easy to learn and even harder to forget. You can swing a bat or kick a ball, you can do this. And if you want to really be able to protect yourself and your loved ones when you're out in this crazy world or when that crazy world kicks in your front door, just click the button to check out my 60 minute self-defense program now. You can get instant access to the online program for a ridiculously low, low price. And if you order today, I'll also give you three incredible bonuses absolutely free. So go ahead and click on the button and I'll see you on the other side.